I believe, the caricature that's painted of Christians as being mean and hateful, uh, it creates a context where violence is being perpetrated against Christians. I looked, uh, just a very cursory look online, and in the last three years, I found 10 instances of church shootings. That doesn't get reported, where Christians are being shot in church. Christians in San Francisco are living in intimidation. Uh, for instance, just recently, gay activists crashed a Roman Catholic worship service, desecrated the Eucharist, and mockingly uh, made fun of the faith there, videotaped the whole thing to broadcast it, clearly sacrilege. And the Roman Catholic Church there did nothing, I believe, because of intimidation. What you don't know is immediately after that, in that same week, a man was arrested for trying to set fire to a nunnery where there were seven nuns asleep in that building. And it's an incredible context of intimidation. And unfortunately, if that can happen in one city and Christians' rights to worship freely are abridged, that can be exported everywhere. The setting for that action was, of course, the Folsom Street Festival. Talk to us about that. Well, yes. Um, the Folsom Street Fair, which is nothing more than a sadomasochistic, perverted event that's on the, literally on the streets of San Francisco, took one of our sacred images, the, the picture of the Last Supper, and desecrated that by dressing up in leather outfits and putting very obscene sex toys on the table. And it was just kind of an in-your-face picture directed at Christians. And the bishop of the Catholic Church spoke up and said, this really isn't appropriate. So for his actions, these radical gay activists, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, crashed this worship service to send a message that you cannot even criticize homosexuals when they're acting out, even in the most outrageous fashion. Beautiful Fort Lauderdale in Broward County, Florida, now has the distinction of being number one in the nation in the spread of HIV AIDS through male homosexual activity. But when Mayor Jim Noggle attempted to curb the spread of sexually transmitted diseases, he found himself at ground zero in the culture war. The media is trying to portray me as being a homophobe and, um, and guilty of hate speech and an intolerant person. Even though my personal belief is that I, I don't approve of the lifestyle, I try not to judge people and, uh, and carry out the duties of being mayor in a way that is based on law and public health. The mayor angered homosexual activists by announcing that the city would crack down on illegal sexual encounters taking place in public places, such as men's rooms at local parks. There are websites out there that have 19 pages of uh, places where men can have sex with men and meeting up uh, in public restrooms and other public parks and the like. And it's uh, something that I want to try to eliminate it. Anonymous sex is one very dangerous public health activity. And especially when you're talking about you know, the CDC designated category, MSN, men who are having sex with men, their health risk of anonymous sex are even higher than the average person because they are limited to practicing sodomy. In late 2007, Mayor Noggle called a press conference to issue an apology. Well, Mayor Noggle did apologize at the press conference, but he did not apologized to the homosexuals, he apologized to the citizens and for not actually trying to stop this in advance. That press conference prompted new protests. I'm asking the Broward County Commissioners to pass a resolution to censor Mayor James Norville. Dr. John Diggs came from Massachusetts to support Mayor Noggle's public health measures. But it should be clearly seen that even today, in 2007, that homosexual acts have a key role to say in the spread of all sexually transmitted diseases, especially HIV and AIDS. I think when you look at mayors that are around the country, you should be very proud of Mayor Noggle because he does something that's number one, courageous, and number two, puts the health of his citizens at the highest level of priority. But a heckler tried to disrupt the press conference. What you people are doing is completely wrong. After the press conference, the media paid more attention to the heckler than to the medical expert who had flown from New England to attend the press conference. 
The media interviewed the heckler, who turned out to be an AIDS activist. The media is playing a big role in this controversy, and I think the media is guilty of censorship because a lot of the points that we are making in this battle are being ignored by the mainstream media. Similar acts are happening in towns and countries, towns and cities across the country where public health officials, officials are not standing up, the executive, the mayors are not standing up and saying this needs to stop because it's imperiling the health of the public. So I have to applaud uh, Mayor Noggle uh, for doing that. I feel I have the strong support of a majority of the residents here uh, in Fort Lauderdale and um, it really doesn't matter, you know, how I'm attacked. I, I because because of uh, my strong beliefs, I feel that I will continue to advocate the position that is right and uh, that is moral and that is in in the interest of lawfulness and public safety. So, um, whatever the consequences, so be it. Many people think that allowing for same-sex marriage doesn't affect you. In fact, that's one of the main arguments. It only is a privilege for that couple. It doesn't affect anyone else. But we've already seen that, in fact, it does affect other people, particularly parents who want to raise their children with moral beliefs and with the understanding that marriage is between one man and one woman. I'm concerned about same-sex marriage for a host of reasons, but I think the chief one that motivates me is this, that when government prescribes a wholesale redefinition of the family. It knowingly sets a policy that knowingly deprives children of a mom and a dad. Study after study after study, all the ones that are done in a nonpartisan manner, tell us that kids need a mom and a dad to do well in life. Two moms could be two great moms, but they can never be a great father. And that's the point of it all. The genders complement one another. That, that was in our, inherent at our design. I can do things for my sons that my wife cannot do just because I'm a man. My wife can do things for my sons and understand and give them impressions in life that I cannot have any hope of providing to them because I'm not a woman. It's uh, profoundly wrong to make children the guinea pigs in a very radical social experiment. So those who are saying, I want to have the rest of the public recognize my homosexual relationship or my lesbian relationship are essentially saying, don't just tolerate what I do. Don't just say I'm going to live and let live. Don't just say what anybody else does is their own business and I'm not going to interfere with it. You have to approve what I'm doing. And you don't just need to approve it. You have to say that it's legitimate religiously. You have to say that what I'm doing is not sinful. You have to say that what I'm doing is just as legitimate, just as valid as a marriage between a man and a woman. You know, the reason why we, many of us press so hard for amendments to our state constitutions to define marriage as between one man and one woman is really goes back to our United States Constitution. And there's a clause within the Constitution that's called the Full Faith and Credit Clause. And, and effectively it says this, look, if there's a law in Massachusetts People in West Virginia have to give it the full faith and credit that it's due. Because of the full faith and credit clause of the United States Constitution, if a couple were to go to Massachusetts or to go to Connecticut or even go to California during the time that that was legal and, and get married in those states, because of that clause in our United States Constitution, in technicality, we are supposed to recognize the laws from the other states, unless we have a policy within our own state to not do that, or within our own Constitution not to do that. Well, that's why these Defense of Marriage Acts were introduced in the first place. That's why throughout the country there are some, I think, 39 or more states that have put within their statutes laws that will limit what marriages they will and will not recognize. It's really interesting when you look at the outcomes of like elections. In every instance where the definition of the family has been put for a vote, the American public says, I want to keep marriage set a sacred title so that it exclusively refers to a relationship between a man and a woman. And that's universal. Every time it's come up for a vote, it has passed. And the public has said very, very clearly that marriage should be between a man and a woman.